What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. So today we're gonna to talk about the plank. And we're really gonna to get to the truth about the plank because there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to this exercise. And I'm not trying to pile on this exercise, guys, because I've covered it in the past, maybe not so favorably. However, there are always valid reasons for that. And there are instances where we'll program the plank, you know, even sometimes as a form of rest, but I, I'm always trying to get somebody off of that basic version of the exercise as soon as possible, even if it's a, you're a true beginner. So no matter what level you're at today, I think you, you need to see why we're gonna talk about what we're gonna talk about with this exercise. So let's get right to it. What are some of the things that you've heard about the plank? You've heard number one, it's a great core stability exercise, right? Well, I'm gonna argue no, okay? Because if we get down and we look at what's actually happening, we get in this position here, and this is supposed to be great for core stability. What are we preventing? If I were to let myself go and drop, I drop down into lumbar extension, right? But this says nothing about rotational stability because I have four uh, points of contact with the ground here. I'm not being challenged rotationally. If I had one arm up or so, okay, now it's a little bit more rotation stability uh, challenge, but that's not what's happening. So instead of having you down here on the ground, which I never like to do, I'd rather have you get up on your feet like this and challenge your rotational stability. This is much more important. This is much more functional. This is something you're gonna encounter more often in life is challenges to your rotational stability. And that's what the abs are built for, to prevent and also control that motion. But if you wanted to still control this sagittal plane stability, like you would in a plank, do it again standing, do what I'm doing here. I actually did this with some of the WWE wrestlers that come through here. There's better options there, but it, go, it goes further than that. The second thing that you'll hear about is people say, well, this is a great glute exercise. It's not a glute exercise, not in the slightest bit. There's something that's confusing people as to why, and that's this. People get down here and they say, now, when you're in this position, here's what you do. Squeeze your glutes as hard as possible. Really, really fire up your glutes. So what? That's not doing anything for your glutes. All you're doing is you're contracting and squeezing your glutes, but you're not under load. They're not under resistance. It's the same as me going like this and flexing my bicep, but it's not under load. I'm contracting it, but I'm not loading it. Why? Well, let me show you. If I get in this position here and I were to actually let myself go, I go down into hip extension, one of the main functions of the glutes. But that's free because gravity is pushing me down here into hip extension. What I'm actually using to get myself up is my hip flexors because if I were to squeeze my glutes from here, all I'm doing is driving myself further into hip extension to the ground. They are not driving this motion. They are not being resisted. The hip flexors do because to get myself back up, I have to push through my toes into the ground and lift up. Pushing myself into hip flexion is what gets me up into this exercise. This is a hip flexor exercise, not a glute exercise. Completely opposite side of the joint. So we go into the third thing. And the third thing is it's great for your low back. Great for people that have low back problems. I'm going to disagree again. Why? Because if we know that it has a heavy reliance on hip flexors and developing hip flexor strength, we know that that can contribute to an imbalance that leads to problems down the road with low back pain. And we talked about this in many other videos before about an over-reliance on the hip flexors as opposed to the abs and doing any exercise that's supposed to be for the abs is going to contribute to low back pain. So we get in this position again and we realize that once again, what's supposed to be good for my back being driven by an over-dependence on hip flexors is going to pull down on my lumbar spine because the hip flexors go through here and attach to my lower vertebrae, pulling down, causing pain. If you spend a lot of time doing planks, which is what people do, they spend minutes and minutes doing them, lots of repetitions, you're going to create more and more of that imbalance. Which leads to a fourth thing that you probably hear, and that is posture. This is a great postural exercise. I think people th say that because they say, oh, he looked like he's in a good posture here, nice and straight here, but they'll also say that you get a good squeeze up here between the shoulder blades, you work your interscapular muscles. This is a benefit to having better posture from the upper torso, less rounded shoulders. Again, completely, completely wrong. You can't just take what you're saying. Guys, I've been sharing clips here. This is, I wasn't making this up. Every time I made these points, these points were taken from articles online saying these very things. You're reading the same things I am. These are just not true. If I get in this position again, what's happening? If I were to let myself drop down, I go into scapular retraction. Again, that's, that's free. That doesn't cost us anything. I'm not trying to squeeze myself there. Now people will tell you to squeeze, 
Squeeze hard, you know, in between your shoulder blades when you're in this position. Really get a good activation of them. Again, it's the same equivalent. Just because I'm contracting something doesn't mean that I'm contracting under load. What gets me off of the ground is the opposite. It's not scapular retraction, it's scapular protraction. Here's how it looks. If I'm in this position here and I'm down into retraction, resting, the only way to get out of that into a proper plank is to protract the scapula. Not retract, protract the scapula. So the serratus is working, not the interscapular muscles. So there's four things that you're being told about this exercise, in addition to all the other things I talked about before, how being too easy and something that we need to find more challenging ways to, do, to, 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 to escalate that exercise as quickly as possible to get more benefits. But there is something you can do. And what you should do is you got to flip it over. This is something that's going to help you for a long, long time. And you don't have to do it for a long time. You just got to do it consistently. And as you flip it over, you work the opposite side. This is a reverse plank. Now, if we get in this position here, we can actually resist all the muscles that we said we were working before but weren't in a way that's effective and, and, and meaningful. So I get in this position here, and what I do is I take my arms and I rotate them out. By rotating out, I'm actually involving all those muscles in the upper back. First of all, the rotator cuff to externally rotate the shoulders. And then as we get down, I can actually squeeze my shoulder blades together, right? Pinch them together. Now, the legs are out straight. I lift up by actually contracting under load, the load of, of the downward force of gravity here. So now there's a lot more being done by the glutes. And I lift up and I lift up, just like that. And I try to hold that plank a lot harder. Now there's variations that you can do to step this up because this is difficult. You can start by elevating your torso a little bit more like this on some pads which is going to make this a little bit easier to initiate. And if you're a beginner, you could take this up even further and put yourself up onto a bench to alleviate some of that force that you have to generate in those muscles that are probably weak. But I will tell you this, guys. If you incorporate this every day just for even a minute, you're going to have a lot more significant jump towards correcting the things you thought you were correcting in the first place with the plank. It's going to go a lot further towards reversing these imbalances we have. If you think you're weak here, Believe me, you are twice as weak in the posterior chain, and it needs more work. And the plank is not going to cut it. I'm not trying to pick on it again, like I said. I'm just trying to be real with you and give you the truth behind this exercise, because I know a lot of people are using it from beginner to even more advanced, and I think you can be using your time more appropriately. If you're looking for a program, guys, where we lay things out like this, we don't select exercises based on popularity. We select exercises based on their effectiveness. We lay them all out step by step for you in all of our plans over at athletics.com and we put the science behind our selections every time we do that. If you're looking for more of our videos, make sure you're subscribed and turn on your notifications so you never miss one and leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else you want me to cover and I'll do my best to do that for you. And one more point that I want to clarify. What does that exercise look like? If you've been following this channel for any length of time, it should look like a face pull. That is a bodyweight version of a face pull working the same muscles that we talked about already at the same frequency with the same level of importance that we stress with that exercise. It's one of the best things you can do for your body. This is no different. All right, guys. See you soon.